Dolphin is an older yet great emulator for Wii and GameCube games. And sadly there hasn't been a stable release for over two and a half years. But the developer releases have had major updates. So I always recommend installing the latest developer update. Just before the beginning of this video, I want to say I created a Discord for Dolphin. It currently has 300 plus members. And if you want support or anything for Dolphin, you could go there. So let's start setting up this emulator right now. So if you go to the Dolphin website, link down below, you can press this download button right here to get to the download page. First I'm going to show you how the compatibility section works. So over here you can see the games that are perfect, playable, starts, intro menu. And once you click on here, you can search for the games you want to see and see how well they work. So most games are listed in here and you can also filter on playable or perfect games. So let's go back to the main page and click on download. As you can see right here, there are developer versions and stable versions. As said already, I always recommend having the latest developer version. I'm going to focus on Windows and macOS versions since those are basically the same. The setup for Android is a lot different and I might cover it in another video. So let me know if you are interested. So let's download the Windows uh, file and put it in whatever folder you want. I'm going to put it in here. And once it's downloaded, open it up. So show in folder. Once here, you can unpack it if you don't have the option to do this. I recommend using WinRAR or 7-Zip. And go to the Dolphin Master you just unpacked. And here you see the dolphin.exe and this is the emulator. So open it up. And for me it's already loaded. So let's go through the setup. So in config I recommend having the enabled dual core. Most of this is already default. I recommend having cheats enabled. And show game on discord if you have discord. The speed limit should be 100% for most. You can select the auto update so I'm going to put it in dev but you can also use beta and this is up to you if you want to enable usage statistics and I always recommend the CPU engine on JIT it works the best. For the interface I recommend leaving it as default. For audio again I leave it as default. I do recommend having X audio 2 if you don't have it enabled. For pods here you can select the game directory and you can go here click add and here select where you install all your games. So for me it is Wii ROMs and select the folder. So it's in here now twice so I'm removing one. And make sure you check search subfolders so it can find games which are in subfolders. So that's a great way. For GameCube games I recommend leaving it as default and for Wii games I recommend you copying in some of these. So PAL 60 have enabled Screensaver doesn't really matter. A USB keyboard could come in handy if you need to type out text. I recommend having the aspect ratio on 69 so you get a widescreen game. The language is whatever you want. And the sensor bar, you can toy around with it if it isn't really accurate. For advanced, I recommend having it the same as it is right now. So next, move on to graphics. Over here, I recommend having Vulkan if you have a modern CPU like me. If you have an older CPU, Direct3D 11 or OpenGL might work better. But for modern CPU, uh, GPUs, I recommend having a Vulkan backend. For the aspect ratio, I have Force 16x9 and you can also leave it at Auto if you selected it before. I prefer using a full screen and VSync. VSync is to get rid of the tearing in the screen, but if you don't mind, you can leave it off. It doesn't really matter that much. I also have show FPS, but that's also not a huge thing. And the net play things I won't cover in this video. So for the shader compilation, you can use synchronous, uh, synchronous Uber, shader, Uber shaders or asynchronous Uber shaders. The default is synchronous and if your performance is good, you can leave it at that. With synchronous Uber shaders, you can remove some stutters. Uh, as said right here, it is recommended you have some high end systems. And if you get stutters with Uber shaders, you can use the asynchronous option. This reduces the stutters a bit. So yeah, basically that. 
And you can also uh, compile the shaders before starting. And again, you don't have to do this really. So for the enhancements, you can up the resolution. I'm using 1080p because my screen is 1080p. I also use 4 times MSAA to get some better clarity. Some 16x filtering and post-processing I have on FXAA. Over here you can use all these uh, enhancements. I have these enabled and you can also enable the widescreen hack if games don't work. And for the rest I do don't think you should enable anything. And you can enable a 3D mode if you want, if you have that um, enabled for your TV or something. For hacks I recommend having it all as it is in default. If you have a CPU bottleneck you could try out GPU texture decoding. Uh, that could increase the performance a bit and if you don't know just leave it unchecked. And as it says right here Vulkan does not support this feature so you need to have another backend. In advanced you can leave everything as default and I don't recommend changing anything unless you know what you're doing. So the last uh, input is the controller section. Here you can configure what controllers you have connected to your Wii basically. So if you have a GameCube controller, you can select here whatever you want. So for example the standard controller and you can configure it here. Here you can select the device you are using. So you can use all devices if you want to mix something. And you can use X input or keyboard and mouse. And you just click on here and click on whatever you want and it will load up. I'm going to close it out right now because I don't have this set up. You can use a Wii controller. You can use uh, a genuine one. So a real one and you can select it here and if you haven't selected connect it via Bluetooth on your computer and once it's connected you can click refresh until it connects. You can also use an emulated Wii remote again click configure and here you can select everything you want for the actual uh, Wii remote, the nunchuck and you can also use the motion controls as seen right here. So I'm going to set it on a real Wii remote and you can enable the speaker data on the Wii remote. I'm going to disable it for now and you can use a balance board, which is nice. So that is the basic setup for Dolphin. Again, if you have any problems, feel free to join the Discord. And I'm going to show you that it does work in Super Smash Bros. if my controller is connected.